This sound was recorded on the 31st of August 1962 to the Rose Creek Reader Rose McLean. Ready? Ready. Between yourself, between 
media between the boy called Bram, also between he whom you call Chopin, he whom you call Valentino, and others whose names yet I have not revealed to you. But they, in time, should all be known. They should be known by their past names and past experience. And they should be known in other ages by other names to you and in the present time in which you exist. You shall know those still remaining by that. All oh, that has transpired in this last year, particularly, is the culmination of experience. Though it is not yet fully registered and experienced by you, or for that matter by the media or other souls so involved, yet nevertheless, the beginning, shall we say, of the revelation commenced in the summer of last year. He whom you call Juan, who at one time was your son. Yes and the link which has been reformed means that the tie which has been unbroken has been as it were strengthened and the link shall continue and more knowledge shall be revealed to you in consequence and though there are those who I have already said are not yet fully developed fully conscious of the purpose and the meaning of this present existence. And there are those who, as it were, have lagged behind in the race. They are still one with us. That is why, naturally, we impress certain individuals, such as yourself, to do certain things. Sometimes, there are things of the material nature on the surface. But underneath the material benefit is a far greater spiritual import and spiritual desire. You have, child, seen changes within yourself and indeed within others. Some of these changes have been most beneficial and have been good and there have been certain changes which have caused some concern and perhaps shall we say some distress but in the evolution of individuals the whole purpose and meaning of an incarnation surely is that one should assimilate and experience much knowledge and it's clearly been learned often by devious roots. Do not think for one moment that we necessarily choose the path and I do not suggest by that either that the path is necessarily mapped out or planned in advance for us but by our very lives, by our very thoughts, by our very actions we create a set of circumstances which to some extent indicate the way in which we shall go. It is true also to say that other souls linked with us, sometimes souls perhaps for the time we bear resentment towards or perhaps we do not understand them, we do not see eye to eye as it were, they influence us. And sometimes, because they influence us, we are irritated and annoyed and distressed. And sometimes we try to build a barrier and go in the opposite direction. But it alters not the fact that when there are souls who are so linked as you are with these friends, then there is no pulling apart. There is no going in a different direction even though they may for the time stray, it alters not the fact that they return eventually to the path that must be
being set down. We cannot avoid our fate. And if I indicate by fate a path that is prepared, it is not quite in the sense that perhaps some people would understand it. If I can explain to you in this way that all your lives do its own thing together, long experiences therein, have made it possible and planned in consequence the ultimate end, which is the reunion of all selves so entwined, whereas they shall eventually in consequence, though they have taken devious roots, come back to the same point, but each one more developed, more wise, more spiritually purified, and having learnt the essential lessons that were necessary for them in the particular incarnations in which they find themselves. One of the biggest arguments child against reincarnation is the fact that so few can remember past lives. So few can put together anything of consequence that would indicate the truth. This has always been a barrier to many people who say, if we have lived before, why is it that we do not understand and remember things? And if it was so that we remembered, why should that not be a clear indication of what to avoid in a present incarnation? But there so many who argue in this fashion do not understand they have not yet reached the level of realization. If we tell you, as we do intend and have already told you in part, certain things that have transpired in past lives in which you have been so linked and entwined with others. If we tell you so much, we do not tell you these things so that you shall live in this present existence artificially, as it were, on your guard, doing things because you feel that you must do them, because if you do not, you are not changing or altering the situation for yourself or for others. In other words, all that you do in any incarnation must spring not from remembrance of past lives or where you may have gone wrong in the past existence, but they must spring these deeds from within your innermost soul because you feel the need and the desire to do things that are good. We learn by experience. We learn from our mistakes. And often people say, if we learn from our mistakes, will it not be a great help to us that in this particular incarnation that we can recapture memories of past mistakes and past lives and so avoid the pitfalls? And the point is, child, that we are talking of man's spiritual unfoldment and development, which means that man himself, from within himself, must desire to do certain things because they are good to do, not because in a previous life he did otherwise. In other words, though we may tell you the past incarnations, whatever you may have done, or any soul may have done in that past incarnation, that chapter of that particular book is, in a sense, closed. It cannot be altered. You cannot in any way change what has happened. But what you can do is, by the experiences of that life, you can utilize those experiences in the present incarnation and utilize that knowledge that we give you so that you can progress further in the present what I wish you to know, what I wish everyone to know is that we must not falsify, we must not force in any way what we are or what we have become. We must not do any one thing because we think we should do it, because in the previous incarnation we did not do it. And therefore if I or others tell you about many of the experiences of past existences, it is clearly and surely only 
that you might see how man has progressed through generations of time and experience to his present level. And that is why I say to you, as I said previously, that your present level of spiritual achievement is great. And I say that in all humbleness, as indeed I feel in myself when I talk, if I were to talk of myself in my own state of development, I speak in humbleness, not in pride. I am happy for you, because I know that through the vicissitudes and all the disillusionments and disappointments of past existences, you have reached this present state, not because it has been through fear. And that is why I think it's so important to remember that all that we do, we must do in love, which you do do. Whereas so many who think they understand something in this great truth of incarnation say to themselves, well, in that in, in incarnation I did such and such a thing that was wrong. Now, in this incarnation, I must be extremely careful and avoid doing that because of the consequences. In other words, unless it comes truly from the heart, you would be living a lie, you would be doing things through fear. And anything that is bound up with fear, anything that is based on fear, is a bad thing. That is why we, on this side, have little time for many orthodox religions because so many are based fundamentally on fear, the consequences. In other words, unless you are good, you will suffer the consequences. I say to you that when it is that one is called upon to do something, one does it through love. And therefore, when it is done in love, it is good. But when it is done in fear, because you feel you must or have to do it. In other words, if you are forced into a corner, as it were, and you therefore feel you must do something. That is not good. Yes, I understand. I... Yes, child. I wonder if it could be possible when the medium is in poverty, would you be able to control him at all? So much, child, depends, as you well know, on circumstances. Yes. Our purpose in this is yes. that the psychic force, which is very powerful in Pompeii still, and which holds in the etheric atmosphere certain memories, certain forces, which in the case of the instrument are definitely beneficial, will enable us to strengthen him psychically physically and spiritually. For a long time, child, you've seen the workings of the spirit. One does not perhaps wish to reiterate so much, so often, but there are times when one feels called upon to reiterate and reiterate. The medium was chosen from an early age for service. That service began even earlier than he realized. When one has been born under circumstances such as he is, there is a reason in that child. In previous incarnations, and particularly the one of ancient Pompeii and Rome in particular, he was born under influences, circumstances far different, and of course in an age which is vastly different to today. But in that early age, he began to see something of the power of the Spirit. He may not and certainly did not fully understand it any more than you, or I, or others, Yet we were drawn together, and the first dawning of wisdom came in that time so long ago. 
the journey is that through the centuries, through various rebirths, he and others, including yourself, have played a part in the scheme of things. And always there has been the desire for knowledge, the desire for service to the suffering world in which you find yourself. In this incarnation, it was essential and necessary that he should be born in what you term poverty, under such conditions that he should from the very earliest age become what you call, I believe, an introvert, to always be searching within himself for the answer never quite fully perhaps understanding the meaning or the purpose, but eventually being led to discovery, discovery of truth and the desire for propagating it and for the comforting of the less fortunate peoples. His mission for 25 years or more has been to comfort and to enlighten humanity. But the time has come, as we prophesied that it should come, and others prophesied before me would come, when he should work more fully, more cooperatively with those of a higher order for the truth to be revealed, with a possible chance and hope in our hearts that it could be revealed in such a way as possibly has never been revealed before. How far we can achieve this, we cannot say. But we do know that given the years that lie ahead of continual development and mediumship and opportunity, we shall through him be able to give to the world a lasting realization of truth that will break down many of the old barriers and open up vistas and horizons which man possibly never thought was possible. You may say to me that all this in part has been done, that various souls have been chosen and used in various ways to enlighten mankind. And when one knows of their work, one is conscious of that dedication. One may say that this instrument is not a dedicated instrument, or at least show himself the surface that will give the impression of being a dedicated instrument. A child, we must not always see on the surface. Sometimes we must dig deeply down. And if and surely there have been reasons to believe. If there have been times when it seems that our work has stood in the beds, has been perhaps held back, it is because of circumstances. As usual, material circumstances. But we are grateful for the instrument we use. We are grateful for the opportunities that occasionally present themselves. Do you not think, do you not realize that all the years that the instrument has been used by various souls on this side with good intent and purpose, but do you not think that we have waited patiently when we should eventually be able, through circumstances which we hoped we could bring into being, that would make it possible to come through freely, to speak openly, to speak truthfully, without any fear of any kind to prevent us, any circumstance to stand in our path. We had to be patient. We had to wait till certain members of the group were brought together again. A long time ago, you were brought into contact with the medium again. And for some reason, which I cannot perhaps at this moment explain, you were not drawn, neither were you in 
country. But I don't think there was an answer to that. I think perhaps it was a good thing that I see it as I do see that it was not the time. It was not possible. There were circumstances and conditions yet to be changed, obstacles to be removed. And we must bear in mind that in the unfoldment and the development of this instrument, we had to use, as we always have to use, and we freely admit this, we have to use others. Sometimes they are the right person or persons for that particular time and circumstance. They may not even be members of our group, as we would refer to them, but they serve a purpose and with this instrument, certain souls were brought into his being, into his life at certain points en route to that work which we were preparing. They served a great and wonderful purpose. They filled a niche that no one else at that time could have filled. And when that work was done, and that life was drawing to his earthly close. They would gave, as it were, their task to someone else. If you will look back on the medium's life, and he in particular, you will find that at every stepping point, when there was need, there was someone there. Someone who fitted at that time that particular task. Now we come to you. I know that it is often in your mind that the spirit world, as you refer to us, uses you. We do not deny that. Why should we deny that which is so obvious? Because the spirit world gives freely of all that it has to those on earth who will listen and who will in consequence give of themselves in and in service. Of course, child, and who should be more right to serve the spirit than you? For your earthly tasks are nearly finished. And your spiritual tasks are beginning. And when you leave the earth body, for the last time, never, as far as I know, to return, you will have had the realization that you have given the opportunity for greater service to one who for long has been linked with you. For after all, the present situation in which you all find yourselves is surely the obvious development that has taken place among you all over this long, long history. And of course, we do not see in your world, in the sense as so many in your world actually see materially. We are not concerned with material possessions as such. We know only too well that that which the earth gives to its children is a natural law. But we know also that what children receive from earth in its many ways and benefits they must also need. And only that which they can bring here is themselves truly in spirit as to what they really are, by what they have achieved with the spiritual self. Therefore, when we say, do this or do that, we are not concerned in the material sense. We are concerned with the spiritual benefit that will be derived for all concerned, not one person, not the instrument in particular. We have prayed and we have hoped that when the instrument was more materially placed, that he would be then more spiritually used. But we also 
them know, as you probably know, the dangers even of that. And therefore we say to you, to do what you can, when you can, and as you may, as the Spirit moveth you, as you have been moved to do something recently, as you have been moved to do things in the past, but always bear in mind, my child, whatever you do, realize that it is the power of the Spirit that desires. We are not concerned with material benefits. And if we are concerned with the material benefit of the instrument, purely behind it all lies the desire for spiritual service and the opportunity that will accrue from such a change vibrational condition within that we can in consequence serve more freely and more easily if we can take from him certain material concerns or what is as you in your own fashion try to help him and we appreciate it is enabling the word of the spirit to be given forth into your world that others may benefit always always that what we do though sometimes may be seen for one person benefit is not so. We are concerned with all God's children, whether they belong to our group or whether they do not. For we, when we talk about groups or group souls, when we talk about various parties of people, whether that is a small group or a large one, whether it is a few here or thousands, as some indeed these groups do contain thousands, we are not in any way thinking in a narrow sense because we realize, as I tried to explain to you, that all the spheres, and there are innumerable spheres containing innumerable numbers of souls who have had many incarnations and who have come together on a certain strata or level because of their unfoldment and development, one with the other, and reaching a certain height, therefore, naturally, they are one group, or one plane, or one sphere. You have heard often people speak from our side of various spheres. You've heard loose expressions such as Summerland. You've heard such expressions as the first sphere or the fourth sphere. These are but terms, these are but words in which one tries to describe or depict a certain aspect of life as it exists over here on a certain plane of knowledge and experience. Those of you who are linked with us are many, and we are on one strata, though there are some still, as it were, in the earthly world, mentally. And spiritually, they are linked and they are tied with us by such bonds that nothing can break. And it is the task of those who are here and who have reached that certain stage of unfoldment and development to help those who are still on earth trying eventually to reach the completeness or the oneness, the harmonious whole with us. They are ignorant of it, many of them. They are ignorant of our being near them. They are ignorant of our truth and our knowledge, and we desperately want to reach them. And if at the moment we are only able to reach a half a dozen of you, we know that through you, each one, we shall reach others, and we shall stretch forth our head, and we shall enfold them closer to us, and in consequence help them to eradicate those remaining faults that keep them from reaching the goal that has been set and reaching that sphere of development in which we ourselves dwell. I told you that this, as far as I know, and I believe sincerely, is your last incarnation. And when you come here, you will be enfolded into that vibration of love and harmony in which many of those whom you have loved in the past 
and those particularly whose remembrance you hold dear will once again be one with you and you with them. Why, my child, since when you were so small, when first you heard the sound of music, why did you respond so naturally and so easily to one whom you term Frederick? Because not alone the music, but the music was the expression of the soul, and the soul in you responded to the soul in the music. It was his way of making himself known to you through ages and ages of time. Because after all, in that music you found that which you refer to as your happiness in this life of yours, your soul happiness has been in that music. And in what that music meant to you and the interpretation that you have of it within your innermost soul and in the desiring of linking up and knowing more of the individual himself. And because of that, you came back, as it were, to us naturally, endeavoring to tune into the spheres in which he dwells. This union of souls, though we talk about a union of many souls, there is also the union of affinity, in which two peoples, through many vicissitudes of life and experience, become one. And when they have become one, they have become perfect. I do not mean perfect in the sense perhaps that some people understand the meaning of the word. But I mean perfect in the spiritual sense of the realization that when you have experienced all things and you have suffered all things and in consequence have become so attuned that you become, as it were, by one vibratory note upon which all harmonies are created. It is impossible in words to tell you these things, why you are drawn so intensely to this or to that. But there is one soul for each and the two blended forming one perfect whole, where the individual shape in itself is unimportant. I do not suggest by that remark that you will not retain shape and form, or that you will not recognize shape or form in another. But what I'm trying to tell you is that though we are all a group, there are still certain souls who are so linked and so blended and so brought together in harmony and in love that perfect love makes possible that oneness which all unconsciously seek. You are one in spirit and in truth and in love with Him. But there are others that are linked many others, because, as I've said, you have been wife, you have been husband, you have been brother, you have been daughter, you have been son, in many incarnations, under many different guises, that you might, through all these experiences, know all things, experience all things, suffer all things and to know joy and sadness. But above all, that love itself, through all these conditions of life, might free you, as it has freed me and freed others, from all the earth's turmoil and strife. 
And out of it all comes the perfect soul to be linked in realms of spirit in such a way that all is joy, all is harmony, all is love, where there is no cause for sadness and for rejoicing. Your links with the instrument I use are many, and the ties are strong. Your links and ties with other souls are also strong. And there are those in your world who are today struggling, fighting, battling life, failing sometimes, and overcoming occasionally. These are those souls who are, at this present moment, trying desperately to lift themselves out of the darkness of your world into the illumination of God's love and purpose for them. You have done various things for various peoples. I do not need to be afraid of mention these things. I know you would be embarrassed if I did, but I say to you, what you have done at different times for various peoples, some not even important to you, and some perhaps for various reasons you have felt if not dislike, you have felt at least you had little in common with, yet nevertheless you have endeavoured. There are some that you have endeavoured with and assisted. And I want to talk to you about this boy that you call Juan Morales. Because he is dear to you, and he is one who has not betrayed a trust. He is one who in himself has endeavoured not always, perhaps having won the battles, but nevertheless, you have made it possible for him, in this particular stage of his evolution, to open up and to become a little more wise, a little more understanding, a little more advanced, and I do not mean just materially, I mean spiritually. That link that was formed, was a link that had to be formed. Do you not see how the medium was used in this? There are there would be some, of course, who know the facts would say, why should the medium have been used in such a way? Why should the medium have been brought into this? But then again, what is a medium? We do not see bodies as such. To us, bodies in themselves are not important. They are only important in as much that they are the focal point through which the power of the spirit can function. We had to use methods which some people perhaps, not knowing the true spiritual facts underlying, would misunderstand and misconstrue. But we see only the power of the spirit and the love of the spirit. We know that there are things that must be done and things that must be undone. But we know this, that the linking up of another soul in our group and strengthening that soul and in some measure making it possible for that soul to discover his true self and uplift himself to higher levels and eventually reach up a little more towards us. We were setting him on the path of prohibition. Of course we use each other. How could it be otherwise? How could, how could life continue? How could spirit grow? How could it find its true self or its true level? How could we discover many things which for a time remain perhaps a mystery, but how could we discover truth unless we took full advantage of each other, knowing that as we took advantage of each other that we were doing nothing that was base, that all that we were doing was to help and ennoble and uplift all God's children. When I talk about a group, when I talk of the group in which 
we all are linked to belong. I do not even think of that only. I think of all the other untold numbers of souls who stand outside, many who are less developed, much less developed. Some indeed who are only almost beginning and are beginning from the very bottom and who are groaning, if you like, in the morass of ignorance and foolishness, who are so material in themselves that there is very little difference between them and the lower animals. And perhaps in that sense I may be doing an injustice to the animals, but we are all fired with the same spirit. The spirit, the living spirit, which animates all mankind, and which is manifest in untold ways. Child, the things that I have to say to you, the things that I have and hope to reveal to you, are many. They will take us a long time, and it is possible, indeed most likely, that I should only be able to do a fraction. But in a sense, child, it doesn't matter. For as much as I can reveal to you, I shall. The rest should be revealed to you eventually, in spirit itself. There again we come back to what I said in the beginning about using each other. Of course we use you. Of course we use other souls. But what you cannot be given while still in the body can still be revealed and still be given through the instrument. Because I do know this, whatever he may say, in his heart he knows the truth and I am sure that he will continue to serve and to make possible the word of the Spirit to be taken down so that when his time comes and his work is finished that which is left behind shall be a document for the whole world to read and in consequence many shall indeed from the benefits thereof be given a new understanding and a new purpose and a new way of life. We are all in demand in service, child. I have told you that I hope to reveal much to you. Indeed, tonight I have intended to discuss and talk to you about certain incarnations, but somehow it seemed as if I had to talk in a different sense, a different way, so that I could perhaps more clarify the picture for you, so that you would see more clearly the purpose and the meaning behind not only my coming, but the coming of others, and those indeed who came before, who showed the path and made possible my coming. We must be patient, but in love, and in true understanding, and in trust, and in service together, we shall do these things. Do not dwell too much, child, on the possibilities that in the near future it may be difficult for you. Because I say to you, child, it shall not be difficult for you. But we shall replenish you. We shall strengthen you. And we shall make it possible for you to continue for some time yet to serve well there, and you shall be shown more clearly the reasons for these things. Be of good heart and good faith, hold to that which is good, and know that we shall not desert or fail you, or those that work with us and serve with us. For as I said before, we are one spirit, we are bound in tiredness and love that nothing can break. And there shall not be one moment when you shall be alone, for we shall be with you at all times and strengthen.
pray for you for his will 